Are you any good on a PlayStation or an Xbox? <laughs> no. Okay, the reason I <laughs> asked that, I, 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 you know yeah, where I'm going now, don't you? Going. Yeah. <laughs> because in um, 1984, you well, appeared on Micro Live with an Atari 800 XL. Yeah, I, I did a few. I did one on Judo, one on the Superstars. We did a few, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what was that about? What was this Atari? Uh, was I mean, the just, Atari was, that was a horrible little well, box, wasn't well, it? Well, when, when, when you, the, when you get, you know, where I did get on TV, which was, you know, the best at Superstars. Yeah. They, they asked me to do all sorts, of, would you do a, you know, an Atari? Would you sing a song? Would you make a record? <laughs> I made a record, for God's sake. I've got it on here if you want to listen to it. And, and, well, and, I'll and, Google and, that and, and put a link in it. Well, I've got go. the record here. <laughs> and um, it's called Jogging's Good For You. With the, with the, the thing is that you get asked to do lots of different yeah. things. And of course, so oh, what's I, can't, the most I can't bizarre. sing the same life. What's the most bizarre thing you've actually done? I think making the record. Making the record. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sing to save my bloody life, but it turned out Yeah, but let's face it, the actually. judges aren't going to tell you that, are and they? Because you'll have them in an headlock. And we gave 200,000 <laughs> records away on, wow. in the fan club, you know, we wow. had a fan club. Wow, um, that's incredible. I mean, I mean, what a fantastic life. I mean, I know, yeah, looking good. at your biography, and I know you've been around, you've been in Munich and Madrid, you've, you've been everywhere. I mean, so I guess the question has to be, why are you now here in Patia? Well, before I answer that question, let me come back to it in a second. But, okay. Um, you, you, you do, you, you get to a certain stage where people want you to keep doing different things, mm -hmm. like like the record. And I mean, I've done some unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, the TV programs like This Is Your Life and Through the Keyhole, Who's Baby, and all the rest of it. I've done all those yeah. programs and all these quiz shows I've been on and so on. Um, and then you get to the stage where you think uh, record. I can't sing to save my life. And when you get in the studio, you realise that it, it's not that diff not that difficult. You know? Right. Um, so it was just good fun doing all the different things and, yeah. and enjoying them. And obviously, I didn't have a job because um, I gave the I gave the job up. So it was a matter of doing as many things as you could. Like when they did through the keyhole, you you got five hundred pounds for the coming out. And when they left, I mean, they pulled the place to pieces. Did they? Well, they? Well, think about it. They can't go in there and just film around because it gives it away too easy of what you yeah, do. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Um, they have to hide everything, so, all your memorabilia yeah, and stuff. So, uh, you know, it was just good fun doing all different things. Mm. And um, the reason I came here was way back in, in um, uh, on my fourth visit to Japan, I... Uh, I had to rush back early to get to go into a competition in the judo. This was when I was doing judo, so I'm going yeah. back quite a way now. And um, I flew from Tokyo to Bangkok, and okay. then Bangkok, London. Oh, okay. well, when we got to Bangkok, they said, oh, we're very sorry, you're going to have to put you in a hotel for a, a few hours because there's a technical hitch with the plane, blah, blah, blah. So they took us to a hotel in Bangkok um, from the airport. And then when we got to the hotel, they said, well, we're very sorry, but we're going to have to send another plane over because this one can't fly. OK. So they had to send another. So you're going to be here for two nights, that wow. night and all day and the next night. So I just had a look around um, Bangkok and I went, got in a taxi to Patia and had a look around Patia. I yeah. mean, can you imagine it was 1972. It was lovely. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it was um, just a fishing village. then. And what it? happened was it, it reminded me in 72 of Tokyo in 64. It was right. very very similar, you know, street mark, you know, yeah. street stalls and stuff like that. And I just I just loved it. I just thought it was it was fascinating because it was so behind mm. um, you know, Great Britain. Uh, and it was so much like Japan um, that I decided to to come to come back. So I I came back for two weeks, ended up staying for four. Um, you know, because you can just about stay with a visa. Yeah. And then the second time I came, I came for a couple of months, and um, then I just decided that's it. I'm going to stay here because. It, come, it, yeah. Well, because one of the things that we will mention in another video is that you've got View D Apartments, which we'll talk about in a different video, and I'll show you. There'll be a link in the description below. Um, but I mean, aside from that, you've been here a long time. You've seen so many changes. I mean, what's been the most pivotal change you've seen here in the Patia area? I mean, over the years that you've been coming. I don't know. It's very difficult to say because, uh, you know, we, I, I, we, you're, talking, you're going to talk about the apartments later, but I, 
I built the apartments myself. My son and I built, you know, built the whole thing. We yeah. build, We had builders in, and we we managed the whole project. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted something that I that would out, you know, outlast my time here. Yeah. Um, so that's why I built the the apartments, and um, it gives. You, you can't live in this country, as you probably yeah. know, without doing something. You've got yeah. to be doing something. Yeah, you're stir crazy. Uh, I've got loads of interests. I love playing golf. I, I love um, cycling. I cycle yeah, every I often day. see you cycling around yeah. and whizzing. Uh, so whizzing I love my golf. Them. I love my cycling. Um, you know, I, I love all sports. I play a bit of tennis. I go bowling and stuff like that. Yeah. But if you're not that way inclined, which a lot of people aren't that yeah, come here, right, because yeah. I've got a lot in my apartments that... You know, don't know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. They, they don't know what to do. Um, and in your experience, when you've seen like the Muay Thai boxing, what, what's your thoughts on that? Well, just covering the, the the aspect of this is a perfect country for doing sport. Yeah. Because the weather's lovely all the time. Yeah. We, we don't get any winter. I'm not wrapped up all the time, so I can yeah. go out dressed like this all the time yeah. and, and do many different things. And that's the, the main reason that I love living here. Mm. Um, uh, you know the sports side of it, and the, the just so that's why I, I built the apartments to give me that little bit of lease in life to be able to carry on doing what I want to do. Sure. Because obviously money doesn't last forever, does it? Mm. Sorry, what was the next question? No, it's about the Muay Thai. What do you think about Muay Thai? I mean, obviously you've come from a martial arts background, and now you're yeah. seeing these Muay Thai. Um, I mean, well, I did karate in Japan yeah. um, when I was there in 1962, um, and I, I did it with a guy named Oyama. Who, who went in the ring with a ball and killed the ball with his bare hands? Oh, wow. He punched it in the. He knocked the horn out first, completely knocked the horn. It was four hundred pound ball, and he punched it in the stomach and killed the ball. You can see it on YouTube. You see the whole thing on YouTube. Wow. And then he wrestled it to the ground. Um, I went and trained with him, only because he was a legend. Yeah. Um, and I thought that that may help my judo, but it didn't. Mm. <laughs> didn't fancy no, taking no, a bull no, on no, them. No, it's so, they're, they're so, I mean, one is kicking and punching. Yeah. Um, and the other one is, you know, throwing and locking. I mean, if, if we was to go back in time and you was to start your, your martial arts career now and you were in here, would you would you have a crack at Muay Thai? Do you fancy having a go there? I wouldn't start any martial arts. No? Would you not, really? No, Even it's been your whole life. I guess the question I need to Listen. ask you about martial arts is, one question is, how many times have you broke any bones? Oh. I, I de that's what. He, that's exactly why I wouldn't do martial arts again. I've got. A, I mean, I've broken my legs. I've broken my shoulders. I've broken my, all my fingers. I've, knees. I've had 11 cartilage operations. Wow. I've, I've got a tremendously bad back. I can't walk more than 50 yards without having to stop. Wow. Because the bone is so far out of shape. I've got scoliosis where the, oh, right. yeah, yeah, the where the, there's the hip joint. The yeah. bone comes out over. At an angle like that, then goes back again. Yeah. I can show you a picture of it. Um, so when you come through the airports and the, no, the security, I, do you stop bleeping because yeah, you've got I've so got, much metal I've in got, you? I've got metal in my leg here. Look. Yeah. Wow. Um, oh, I've, I've had everything you can think of. I've well, just, if you've got a place to relax. This year, this I just it, had a, oh. I've just had a open heart surgery. So you are an inspiration to people. Then, if you've got, to, <laughs> if you've got anything wrong with you, this man will just say, "Listen, man up and get on with it," because he's. I mean, well, is there anything I mean, you I mean, haven't broken? Um, have you have you cracked no. your skull and stuff like that? No, I've done everything. Have you? You, you know, I've had it. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I mean, unbelievable. I, I mean, I play golf now, but I can't play unless I have a buggy because I can't walk yeah. more than fifty yards. Yeah. So I just hit the ball, get in the buggy, and go. Well, I, lo I love sports, so. Yeah. Um, oh, fair play, but, Joe. But this was a bit of a knockback. This, yeah. this uh, I, well, I, I, I got. It's an interesting story because I went to uh, the hospital here. Um, I had a kidney stone. Right, oh, I've had that. That is painful. But, yeah. Oh, it was painful. Yeah. And when I get there, they got the, the doctor said, well, we've got to remove it. So they gave me an injection to take the pain away anyway. And then they gave me all these tests. And uh, he come in, he said, I'm ever so sorry, he said, but uh, we, we can't do the operation because your aorta has enlarged too much. And right. if you have the anaesthetic, it could burst and you'd be dead within 10 seconds. But the aorta is the big tube that mm. comes out. So... Uh, I said, oh, but what do I do, you know? Anyway, I just left it, um, and I left it for a couple of years. But I went back to England to have it checked by a private specialist, yeah. Mr. Jackson, who's since died, unfortunately. And he, he said, you, you can leave it, but have it monitored, and we'll tell you when, 
Anyway, the third year I went back and he said, no, got to, it's got to be done. So I went back and had it done last year. No, mm. this year, January I had it done. And um, it was unbelievable because I, I didn't realise how dangerous it was. Mm. The heart, the biggest tube that comes out of the heart is the aorta. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they cut it, cut it there where it's blown, take the blown bit out, put a new tube in, and they put you on a heart bypass machine and all that. And I'm thinking, I ain't going to have all this done. This is I'll, I'll, ju I'll just die, you know. I don't want all that. Because that, that is frightening. I mean, yeah, for sure. Anyway, yeah. The, Mr. Jackson says, well, there's this other doctor that does a different type of operation. He doesn't cut the tube. He wraps it. Oh, so that suppresses it? Yeah. He's done it. I was the 130th one he did. Wow. And um, I had that done, so... Incredible. I'm still, I'm still alive. Incredible. You're doing brilliantly. Yeah. I mean, what, a, what a fantastic example of how to live your life and crack on with it. I mean, fantastic. I mean, what I want to do, we're getting get towards the end now. So I just want to ask you a couple of more questions, please, if yeah, I may. No, no, you carry on. I mean, someone coming here to Pattaya for the first time, what would be your golden piece of advice? Um, d don't. What, what, to live, you mean? To yeah, live someone's here. going to come here. Yeah, I mean, not, not on holiday, no, just no, to live here. No, no, someone's going to come here gonna, to live. <clears throat> if you're going to come here to live here, um, be be prepared because there are many things that can happen. For instance, when I first came, um, the BART was around about 76 to the pound. Mm. Well, it, before that, it was 66, it went up to 70. Then it went to 90 to the pound at one point. Um, but now it's dropped right the way down to yeah, like 38, 40. Yeah, terrible. Um, so be prepared monetary wise because money goes very quickly here. Mm, very, yeah. very quick. Yeah. Um, and you don't realize that the, the, um, the system in, in Thailand is totally different from England, whereby you, you go to golf. For, I'll give you an example. You go to golf, and this happens in everything. You go to golf, right? The golf costs. 2,000 baht, say, to play, to play the round. Then you need a buggy. Yeah, yeah. Then you need to pay the caddy. Yeah. Then you need to give the caddy a tip. tip. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. you need to buy drinks there and so yeah. on. So the, it becomes, it, it, they, in Thailand, it seems to chop away mm. at you in little bits. It's yeah. not one big price and finished. So be prepared monetary-wise because it, uh, it does get very expensive. Yeah, and I, and I do agree. I mean, <clears> you know, <throat> those of you that are watching the show that have experienced those those amounts, of, like you're saying, Brian, your 70s, yes. 80s, 90s, and now we're at 40, and, you know, that's on a good day. Oh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it does get expensive. Well, I mean, I, I went back to England last year, and uh, I went into Tesco's, and I was buying things like four, four of this and four of that for 50 pence and a pound. Yeah. And I'm thinking, Christ, that's only 40 baht. <laughs> Yeah. It's like more expensive in yeah, Thailand. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I and understand it, it that. It seems to be more expensive here now. Mm. All right, my final question, and, I, and I'll, before I thank you for what's been a fantastic interview, thank you so much no, for this. It's a pleasure. Final question. <laughs> Recommend. He's grinning. It's not a trick question. He's okay. Don't worry. Um, no, finally. No, I'm not gay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to talk about lady boys. <laughs> um, no, my final question to you is. If you could recommend one place in Thailand that you have to visit, be it a restaurant, be it an island, be it a, de a destination, where would you say to someone, you've just got to go to this place? Oh, it's such a difficult question. Yeah. The, I thought I was going to make you think at the no, end. No, no, no there, <laughs> there are many, many beautiful You're places. You're only allowed one. But You're only allowed no, one. Let me think about yeah, it. There are many on. beautiful places to go. And Thailand is full of, I mean... Full of lovely yeah, places. You're only allowed one. See, now I'm going to give him um, one minute, and in that one minute, when Brian was younger, he'd have done 104 dips, was it? Yeah, by then? Yeah. <laughs> so well, he's busy doing all this. Come on, you got a minute. I, I, I think uh, probably Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai, okay. Yeah. And the reason and the, being? Well, you can go right up into the mountains, and it's so serene up there, so quiet and so beautiful. Um, there's loads of lovely golf courses up there, which I like golf. There's lovely resorts and so on, beautiful views. Um, Chang, there's, there's yeah, an unfair no, no, no. question. I told you it's not. You right, it's not right. <laughs> he didn't like that one. Don't go get me in the neck hold or any of that judo like, stuff, will you? Ko Chang's lovely. Yeah. You're Ko not allowed to name Joe. You see, you're breaking the rule. I Ko said Samui is lovely. <laughs> All right, brilliant. I, I lived in Phuket for a long time. Phuket's fantastic. Yeah. But there's loads of places. Yeah. For, you know, for goodness sake. Don't take my word for it. There's many places you go. Anyway, they're all beautiful. <laughs> I was in Patty t-shirts. Oh, I can play with 
play golf in that, they'd love it, wouldn't they? I'm sure we can sort that out for you. <laughs> All right, so there you go. That's uh, that's me here on the Coffee Chat Show. Thank you so much for everybody watching. I would like to say, Brian, what an absolute it's pleasure. pleasure. It's been really, really good. There will be lots of links about this man. I could talk to this man for hours and hours and hours, and unfortunately, he's a busy man, so he doesn't have that amount of time. But there are links in the description to Brian's profile, to his Olympics, to all the European stuff. They'll all be down below. Check this man out. He really is a legend, and I'm so, so pleased if to be here. If anybody comes over, you'll have a fantastic time. It's a great place. There you go. All right, that's it from me today here on the Coffee Chat Show. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we bring out a new video. All right, so that's it from me here today. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you very much for watching. And wherever you are in the world, please stay safe. <laughs>